in the presence of the Lord. Let us pray. Oh God, our Father, we give you praise one more time. And we give you all the glory, Lord, and honor you, mighty God. We worship you this morning because we know that you're alive and well. You're seated at the right hand of Almighty God, the King of Kings, the throne, my God, that is there as a place where you continue to plead our cause. You're our high priest, my God. Lord Jesus, you are everything the lion of the tribe of Judah who overcame on our behalf. And we praise you, Father, for salvation. We praise you for the resurrection of our Lord. We praise you for the victory over the grave. We praise you, God, that you have killed death. Hallelujah. We praise you, mighty God. Hallelujah. And we honor you, Lord. Hallelujah. And we praise you, God, that as Jesus was risen from the dead, yes, so have you raised us up this Hallelujah. day, yes, almighty God. Yes, Every child of yours who trust you, Jesus. my God, they are on their way victorious to live a life, my God Almighty, that is consistently abiding by the principles of the cross of Calvary. Oh, we praise and magnify your holy name and worship you and give you all the glory. Lord, take this word and anoint it now again. Anoint this servant of yours and I will be obedient as you speak through me as a vessel. Have your way, O oh God, and let your word go forth without hindrance. We decree and declare all it done in the name of Jesus Christ, Son of Nazareth. O oh Lord and Savior, God's children will agree and say, Amen and Amen. I will not hesitate but to entitle this message, God Bridge the Gap. The cross, the grave, and the final victory. God bridged the gap. The cross, the grave, and the final victory. Amen. And when we talk, we have to kind of set a backdrop for us to understand the dilemma of man. That when man disobeyed God in the Garden of Eden, that man was separated from his God. He was separated and there was a gap place between man and God. We have to understand that as sinners, there is a gap. Jesus Christ told the story of the rich man. All right, Lazarus and Dives. And he talked about the time of death that they ended up in different places. So that tells us and assures us that there is always a gap between God and sin. Right? Hell and heaven. There is a gap. And no one can supersede or go through that gap. It is there, my God, and Jesus Christ cleared it up. Yes. Jesus Christ overcame that gap. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ bridged Hallelujah. that gap Hallelujah. through the cross Hallelujah. of Calvary. Hallelujah. Yes. In Genesis 3, 1 to 4, we heard and read that the serpent was more cunning. The devil got to highlight a little on his work. The word, the word of God says he was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he went into the garden and said to the woman, Has God indeed said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God said, you shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. The serpent said to the woman, you will not surely die. 
For God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. That's the number one lie, the biggest lie. Because we know that nobody can be like God, for he's creator God. And the word of God in Numbers 23 confirms God is not man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should repent. Has he said and will he not do it? Or has he spoken and will he not make it good? So if God says if you touch it you will die, it is so. It is so church, there is no if, ands and buts about it. He says if you refuse Jesus Christ as your savior, you will die. And that's the truth. Don't allow the devil to say anything else. Because God, after man fell, God decided before time to put some gap, to put, to put away how he's going to bridge the gap. He had a plan in place to bridge that gap. Because he knew ahead of time. You see, sometimes folks say, why did God allow that? That God knew that Adam and Eve would have disobeyed. Why did he create them then? And he knew the end from the beginning. But you see, we cannot understand how God operated. Because at some point in time, God has to show the devil that no matter what he does, no matter what havoc he creates, he is still greater than all of that. That he can still create and change what the enemy does. He is God Almighty. And there is nothing that he cannot do. So we ought to rejoice. We ought to rejoice, church, because sometimes the devil creates some situation in our lives. And we kind of wonder as God's people, why, 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 why? But if God does not allow some things to happen, how can he rebuke the devil and raise standards against him? How can he do and show his glory that he is in total control? So in all things then, in all things, no matter what it is that we face, God is God. And he can turn it around. And he usually always turn it around. Because the word of God says, For God so loved the world. We know in John 3, 16. And that he gave his only begotten son. And whoever believes in him should not perish. But should have everlasting life. My God almighty. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world. But that the world through him might be saved. So even though the devil created a situation where man should die ultimately, God Almighty changed it around and bring life, gave us life. Send Jesus Christ to the cross. Oh yes, the cross. My God Almighty. The cross of Calvary. And what took place in Golgotha. The transaction church. Oh my God, and we weren't even there when God was calculated and making all that transaction for our life. For, I want you to think, if you never think about the cross before. My God. Oh my yes, Lord. oh yes, oh yes. My Lord. Ah, we got to think about this cross. Yes. The cross of Calvary. Because the cross depicts shame. The cross, my God Almighty, the Romans perfected it to be agony and pain and disgrace, death, and loss. And they thought that once you go on the cross, that they would be victorious. My God Almighty, church, you got to listen to this. Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. They thought that when they put Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary. That it was finished there. They thought that. They thought that. And the devil. My God had a, a banquet. He planned the death of Jesus Christ. He set it up my God. And allowed one of his disciples. 
Jesus to partake in the falling of Jesus to bring him down. And they didn't even understand, church, that all that was planned, that all that was written in the transaction to be taken place on Calvary's cross. I love the, when I think of the cross of Jesus Christ, I said, Lord, let this cross be my conscience. Let every time I want to falter, let every time I want to disobey you, help me God to look and to gaze. To gaze. To gaze at the cross. To understand what the Savior went through. What Jesus Christ, the ultimate sacrifice that he made, the penalty that he paid, the weapons that he got, my God, the nail print hands and feet. And he did it for us. He did it for us. That's why Ephesians 2 verse 1 and 4 to 9 says, And you he made alive who were dead. In trespasses and sins. But God who is rich in mercy. Because of his great love. With which he loved us. Even when we were dead in trespasses. Made us alive together. With Christ. And by grace. You and I have been saved. And raised us up together. And made us sit together in the heavenly places. In Christ Jesus. That in the ages to come. He might show the exceeding riches. Of his grace and his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you and I have been saved through faith. And that not of ourselves, my God. It is a gift of God, not of works. Lest anyone should boast. And as I was preparing this message, the Lord of hosts brought me back to Lazarus when Lazarus was sick. We all know the story it is in John chapter 11 and you can read it when you go home. The word of God says Lazarus was sick unto death and they sent a message to Jesus and they knew that Jesus had the power to change the trajectory of that situation. They knew that Jesus had the power to keep the man alive. They didn't want their family to die. And the word confirms that Jesus waited for four more days. Hey! He waited, church. So sometimes when we are in our situations, you see, and we think, oh, we're going to die. God, if you don't come ahead, I'm going to die. And God will say, wait a minute. I'm going to wait a little longer. Before I set you free. Oh yes. Oh yes. Oh yes. And we got to understand. How God operates you see. Because everything that God does. It's systematic. There's a time my God almighty. Selated. And the word says. When God showed me it. He showed me that Lazarus died. That Lazarus died. And there Jesus came after they buried him. Man laid in the, in, in the tomb for four days. Stench. Jesus showed up. And Martha said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother wouldn't have died. My brother would have lived. Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. And Jesus looked on, to, and looked on them and said, he is not dead. He will rise again. Hallelujah. And Martha says, Lord, uh, yes, I know about that. I know that on the day, the final day, that he will rise from the dead. Oh, glory, glory, glory. And Jesus, my God Almighty, had to caution and let them know, I am the resurrection. Hallelujah. I am the resurrection. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I came to give life, you see. Anytime I come on this scene, I, it's all about life. And, and when God showed me that, he says, you know, when Jesus Christ was promised, the Messiah, I want you guys to get this, catch this one. When Jesus was promised, my God, this Savior, 
Savior uh, to come in this world. The Jewish folks thought that he would come as this mighty warrior to, to redeem and to save my God, to restore and all that. And they had one thing about this Lord, the Messiah. And, and Jesus had another thing on his mind. Jesus came to give life and not to destroy it. Oh yes. Oh yes. Oh yes. Oh yes. So sometimes the Spirit showed me that sometimes God has some things in plan. And we have something else different. Sometimes he might give you a word and you interpret it to be something else. And, and when you don't get what you interpret to be what God means, you tend to want to chop your hands in the ear. You see, it don't work like that church. We have to be in unison with God's plan. Let's get back to Lazarus because we got to show now. When Jesus turned, Jesus turned them and said, Hey, no, 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 no. He says, go take him to the tomb and, and roll the, take, take, take that stone away. Roll the stone away. Yes, yes, yes. And they said, Lord, you, you, how can we roll this stone? Because by this there is a stench. For he's been dead for four days. And Jesus said hey, you, you, to you that if you would believe, you would see the glory of God. You, want, you need to see. You, when Jesus said, if you roll this stone away, you have to roll the church. For you to see the glory of God. If you're scared and you're afraid that stench is going to come because things dead long time and won't be raised up. You got to roll this stone Amen. so that you can see the glory of Almighty God. If you don't have the faith to roll that stone away, you won't see the glory of Almighty God. And, and long story short, they, they, they agreed and they rolled the stone away. Yes, they did, church. My God Almighty. And the word confirms that when they took the stone away, Jesus lifted up his voice and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. And I know that you always hear me. But because of the people who are standing by, I said this, that they may believe that you sent me. Hmm. And now when he had said these things, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he stayed when he did. The, the man who was dead, Lazarus, was pound hand and foot with grave clothes. And his face was wrapped with a cloth. And Jesus said to them, loose him and let him go. Loose him. Lazarus who was dead, Jesus Christ brought back to life. And as the Lord of hosts was showing me some things, he said you would want to think that when the folks saw Jesus raise Lazarus from the dead, that they wouldn't try anything, none, you know, they wouldn't try no nonsense wanting to kill him. The plan should stop right there. But it didn't happen like that. Because it was all planned the church. The plan was in place for you and for I that we should be saved through the cross of Calvary. That Jesus Christ had to make his way to Calvary's cross. That he couldn't avoid Calvary's cross. Uh, that the transaction was already signed off in heaven and that he was here to get it done. He was there to get it done, church. Obedient, obedience, obedience, obedience. And the word of God says that Jesus Christ, after they arrested him and put him through all these trials and this and that, because the time had come for his father to glorify him, you see. And the word of God says that, uh, that they put a, 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 a cross, they, they, 
they had a cross set up for him. And he carried the cross to Calvary. And there as he went there, if you go to Luke 23, you will see the account. The word of God says when he went and they nailed him to Calvary's cross, that Jesus Christ was there and didn't fight. He didn't take himself off the cross. And he could have done that. They ridiculed him. They said, if you, 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 you raise the dead, you, 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 you give sight to the blind, you do all those things, save yourself, come off the cross, if you think you have the power. If you are the son of God that you claim you are, come down off the cross. And Jesus just remains still. Because he knew my God Almighty. He knew that even though the cross of Calvary, the face, that, the, the, the front side of the cross depicts shame and agony and, and defeat and disgrace. He knew that there was a backside to the cross. He knew that when he accomplished and said, it was finished, my God, that the transaction is complete, and that man would be saved, and you and I would be set free. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, glory, glory, glory. He knew that everything would take place. And now, oh, my God, at the backside of the cross, there would be joy and victory and peace and contentment. There would be cleansing and healing, my God Almighty. Oh, yes, oh, yes, oh, yes. There would be life forever. Life everlasting. Death would die, my God. And Jesus knew that. So he wouldn't bend or bow to their nonsense. Sometimes when folks dear you, 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 your enemies might have you down for a while. Listen up. Hallelujah. And you will be professing your Lord, that you know Lord, the Lord, and that your God is good, and that he's all powerful, and your devil in hell will raise up some folks against you, and when they want to kill you and do all this, and oh my God, when they think you should be, oh you know, and you're going on and on, and God should come down and fight for you, and this and that, and when they don't say it, they want to think that your God is dead, but guess what church, you know that your God is alive. You know that your God has all power. You know that your God has authority over the wicked one. But there is a timing. There's a timing set for it. And Jesus in his obedience didn't bend to their nonsense. He knew that no matter how they ridiculed and, and they hurl all different kind of accusations and this and that. He had his mind on you and I. He had your name written in his heart. He understood that you would be facing the devil forever. And he came, my God Almighty, to reverse the curse. He came to give you life and life in more abundance. Oh yes, he came to swallow us of death on your behalf and my behalf. So they had put Jesus on the cross and they put a, 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 a sign over him, his, over it. The king of a cross. The king of the cross. And Jesus says, yes, you might think this is the king of the Jews, but I am the king of kings. I am the king of kings for all people. Because when it is all over, it's not about Jews, but yeah, it will be about the Gentiles. It will be about those who have lost. It will be about those, my God, who are depressed. It will be about those, so oh God Almighty, who have been reveling with different kind of different things in life. Reveling in sin, my God Almighty. Fighting demons, hallelujah. Oh yes, tossed to and fro, my God Almighty. 
it will be about that. I will be king of kings for all people. Not only the Jews, but all people. And the word says that Jesus had two criminals, one on the right and one on the left. And in the whole process, my God, even though that they were about to lose their life, one was able to be saved into the kingdom of Almighty God because he cried out to Jesus. On the last hour, Lord, remember me when you go into your kingdom and tell you about how Jesus is and that he is for life, church. You just have to cry out to him. He is able. He is able. He is able. He is able. He overcame death. And um, no longer we have to be subjected to death. Death will ultimately be a method of transport for us. Because we have to change from mortality into immortality, you see. So there must be something that transitions us from one to the other. And that's what death will be for us. David says it. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, with me the rod, your rod and staff, they comfort me. So we don't have to be afraid of death. Death sting was taken out on Calvary's cross. You don't, and I don't have to worry about dying because we know it's a process of transitioning from this life to eternal life. And God's people need to give God the praise and the glory. Yes. Jesus said it was finished. It is finished. I have done the work. And can you imagine? I thought of that. I thought of the journey of Jesus Christ while he was journeying on earth. And, and, and everything that he went through. Oh, they tried to kill him, to throw him over precipice. They did everything to, 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 to subvert the day that he had assigned to be on the cross. They wanted to shortcut it. But Jesus remained persistent. Church, as followers of Jesus Christ, we have to draw from his example. Because he was very persistent. He had his mind on Calvary from the day he was born until the day he says it is finished. The work was accomplished for us. The work was done. And this gap that separated us was severed, my God. It was bridged by the Almighty God. Ephesians 2, 13 to 18 says it. The word says, but knowing Christ Jesus, you who once were far off, have been brought near by the blood of Jesus Christ. For he himself is our peace, who has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of separation, having abolished in his flesh the enmity that is the law of commandments contained in ordinances, so as to create in himself one new man from the two, thus making peace. And that he might reconcile them both to God in one body through the cross. Thereby putting to death the enmity. And he came and preached peace to you who were far off to those who were near. For through him we both have access by the Spirit to the Father. So Jesus Christ obediently gave up his spirit. Nobody could have killed him. The word says that he gave, he surrendered his spirit and he hung his head and that was it. They thought that he died and when the devil saw that, oh my God almighty, I can imagine the party that he had. Oh, I got him, I got him, I got him. Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, let's bury him. Put him in the, in the tomb. Put a two-ton stone on the mouth. And make sure you put your guards there. And guards will watch him 24-7. Because we don't want them to come and steal his body. And then they say, oh, he's risen, he's risen, he's risen. The devil had his plan, church. Tell me about the devil. He has a plan all the time for God's people. He had a plan for Jesus Christ. 
and, and when the word confirms that when they buried him, Matthew 27 talks about it, my God Almighty, that they buried him and they did everything and make sure that they put the stone, how many tons, two ton stone at the mouth of the, the, uh, of the, of the grave. The tomb was secured. And they had soldiers. But the word of God says. That on the third day. Hallelujah. The word of God confirms. That on the third day. That Jesus Christ. The king of kings. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The one who has power over death. The one who captured death. In the grave. You see Jesus had to go into hell. And now did some transaction under there in the grave. Captured death. Took the gate, the keys from hell and death. And came up victoriously on the third day. Oh, glory be to God. And the word of God says as they were there watching and making sure, church. Oh, yes, they were like dead men. The guards fell dead as Jesus broke through. My God Almighty, that tomb. On the third day, he's alive, church. He came out victoriously. He conquered and, con and did the transaction. He completed it. And the word of God says after he did it, he did it, he did it. Then he went into heaven, my God, and took his blood. Oh yes, that's how the high priest would have confirmed and do everything in the whole process of man's sin atonement he went with his own blood and put it at the, the, at the heaven my God almighty at the throne of grace and the blood was there and he came back oh yes he came back to earth he came back to make sure that his disciples would know that he's alive he's risen He's alive. Let me talk about it a little from Luke 24, from 1 to 9. For the word confirms that on the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they and certain other women with them came to the tomb, bringing the spices which they had prepared. What a bold, fated people like these, these women. They knew that when Jesus died, that there was this huge stone put at the mouth of the tomb. And yet they went by faith. Oh, glory be to God. They were led by the Spirit of God to go, to get the testimony, to run, with, to let everyone know that he is risen. They went and they went with spices, the word confirmed. To bomb the body of Jesus Christ. Because it was the customary of the Jews. And when they went. When they went. The tomb was opened. The stone was rolled away. My God Almighty. The stone was no longer in place. And there my God. The word says that. The woman started to cry. Where is my Lord? Where did you put him? And there were angels, two angels who says, why would you want to seek the living among the dead? Hallelujah. He's alive. He's risen. Oh yes, he's gone before you. Go and tell the others that he's alive. He is alive, church. God is able to roll away any stone any stone that blocks a child of God, the progress that you're supposed to achieve, they can only put it there for a while. Take it from me. The stone was rolled away. And the fact that the stone was rolled away you tell yourself and encourage yourself that no matter what stone presents itself in your life, my God, to block whatever God says you're to get, tell that stone.
rule with authority that Jesus Christ ruled you away. Hey, you were ruled away 2,000 years ago and he continues to roll away stones from our lives. No longer can any stone stand up before us because he is alive, church. He is alive. Thank you, Jesus. He rose from the dead. He rose from the dead. Yes, he rose with authority. Hallelujah. My God Almighty. He rose victoriously. And he did the work that we couldn't do. He is alive. And he consistently pleads our cases. He consistently loves us. He consistently is drawing us closer to him. He's consistently fighting demons on our behalf. He's consistently raising up standards against the enemy for us. Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, he's our high priest. Hebrews 9 from 11 to 15 says, and let me read it quickly. The word says, but Christ came as high priest of the good things to come. With the great and more perfect tabernacle not made with hands. That is not of this creation. Nor not with the blood of goats and calves. But with his own blood. He entered the most holy place once and for all. Having obtained eternal redemption. For if the blood of bulls and goats and the ashes of heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctifies for the purifying of the flesh how much more shall the blood of Jesus Christ who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God cleanse your conscience from dead works to serve the living God and for this reason he is the mediator of the new covenant by means of death for redemption of the transgressions under the first covenant that those who are called may receive the promise of the eternal inheritance. He is alive. Amen. Behold church. Hallelujah. He is alive. He is victorious. Thank you Jesus. And this is why Revelation chapter 1 from 9 to 19 captures it so well. Amen. The Lord told me you got to use this scripture to let them get it. That it is true. John was on the Isle of Patmos. And John saw my God. God revealed everything. The word says I John both your brother. And companion in the tribulation. And kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ. Was on the island that is called Patmos. For the word of God. And for the testimony of Jesus Christ. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and I heard behind me a loud voice as a trumpet saying, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last. And what you see, write in a book and send it to the seven churches which are in Asia, to Ephesus, to Smyrna, to Pergamos, to Tyreta to Sardis, to Philadelphia, and to Laodicea. Then I turned to see the voice that spoke with me, and having turned, I saw seven golden lampstands, and in the midst of the seven lampstands, one looked like the Son of Man, clothed with a garment, down to the feet, and girded about the chest with a golden band. His head and hair were white like wool, as white as snow and his eyes like a flame of fire and his feet were like the fine brass as if refined in a furnace and his voice as the sound of many waters he had in his right hand seven stars and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword and his countenance was like the sun shining in its strength and when I saw him I fell at his feet as dead but he laid his right hand on me saying to me, do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. 
I am he who lives. Glory be to God. And was dead. And behold, hallelujah, I am alive forevermore. Hallelujah. Amen. And I have the keys of Hades and of death. Write, he says, the things which you have seen and the things which are and the things, hallelujah, which will take place after this. He lives, he lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and he talks with me a long life's now away. He lives, he lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He Father. Hallelujah. We worship at your footstool. Hallelujah. Thank you for overcoming Lord on our behalf. Thank you Jesus my God for making a mockery of death my God. Thank you for the work on Calvary's cross. Thank you for the transaction that you carefully calculated and did in Golgotha. We praise you God and magnify your name. Hallelujah. And we worship at your footstool for your life, oh God. Oh Jesus, your life. Your life in our hearts today. Occupy us, oh God. Continue to live in our hearts. Never leave us nor forsake us, oh God. Continue to refine us, we pray. We give you praise. And we give you glory. And we honor you God. For bridging the gap. Through the cross. My God almighty. The grave. And then the final victory. We give you thanks and praise your holy name. In no other name. But in the name of Jesus Christ. Of Nazareth. Our Lord and Savior and High Priest. Amen. Hallelujah. We give God the praise and the glory. We give him the praise and the glory, church, for he is alive. He is victorious on our behalf. And yes, the fact that he is victorious, we too can be victorious over sin and death. And we thank him and praise him and give him all the glory. Again, in the no other name, but in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Our Lord and Savior, God's children, will finally agree and say, Amen, and Amen, and Amen. Thank you.